Let me start off by saying that the Nikon Z9 seems to be a great camera. Whether it's a 45 megapixel high resolution sensor in 20 FPS raw burst mode or the latest and greatest autofocus technology out there, it's hard not to imagine the images one can take with this camera. For someone who shoots video like me, having 8K 30p with a future promise of 8K 60p recorded internally at 10 bit is a game changer. But before we go any further, let me be straightforward and say that I haven't touched the Nikon Z9 personally. And for that, I'd recommend go checking out Gerald Undone on his YouTube channel for a perfect technical explanation of how the Nikon Z9 works, as well as Ray Hennessy for his great demonstration of how the autofocus works in wildlife and bird photography, as well as checking out Bayou Josh and his thoughts on it because he just always seems to have something good to say about any piece of gear. Also, I'd like to say that for the record, I think the Nikon Z9 is a legit camera. And if I was looking to invest a lot of money into a new camera, this would definitely be considered up there, even above the Sony A1 or even possibly the Canon R3. However, I'm not upgrading. And this is why I think that 86.5% of you guys would have buyer's remorse if you upgraded as well. So reason number one, we have false expectations of cameras covering for our mistakes. Now, what do I mean by this? An example of this is autofocus that is so often talked about in my opinion. Autofocus is this thing that we expect to be able to grab focus and subjects in any sort of scenario when realistically our technology isn't at that place yet. Autofocus might be great, but it can't be perfect yet and neither will it be for many years to come. So every time a new camera comes out, we expect the autofocus just to be spot on, never miss a shot. When in reality, that isn't really possible in the moment. And these expectations of cameras covering for things that we could actually do ourselves leads to false expectations and too high of expectations that can't be met. Me, personally, I've decided to invest into the knowledge and the skill set of learning manual focus because I got tired of using autofocus and relying on it in situations where it wasn't always going to tack and I knew it wasn't going to tack correctly. So rather, I decided to switch into a place of using manual focus where I would manually focus on everything and rely on my own skill set to essentially allow me to make the mistake or allow me to actually successfully get the shot rather than relying on the autofocus to do so. Ray Hennessy talks about in his review of it that autofocus seems to miss about maybe 30, 40% of the time. He didn't have an exact number, but that was kind of his rough estimate. For me personally, I'd rather know that the 20, 30, 40% of shots that I missed were because of my fault and not because my tool was failing to perform at the moment. And beyond that, I just wanna quickly say that I believe that after shooting manual focus solely for the last two years of my wildlife photography career, that I have missed way less shots than I missed in the past because of my autofocus system. So personally, I think it's so important to be able to have that skill set and stop expecting my camera to cover for that mistake that I might be making. This next Saturday, I'm releasing a video on my main channel, Jeremy Knipe, in which I'm photographing one of the world's tiniest, fastest birds using manual focus only. So people think often it's impossible to be able to master these skills, but I assure you, for people like me, it's unlocked whole new worlds of potential of what I'm able to capture in my wildlife photography. Now reason number two is that cameras don't really improve that much each time. If we look into the reasoning why, in the tech world, it's actually important for companies not to progress too quickly and to take small leaps forward instead of large leaps forward. Take a company like Apple, for example. I personally super invest in Apple. I love Apple. I use all Apple products. However, Apple is pretty, pretty straightforward in the way that they very slowly release upgrades and slowly progress their technology. For example, Google, other companies like this will have their technological progresses years before Apple adopts them into their ecosystem. But because Apple is able to package it in a way that looks beautiful and package it in a way that feels refined, Apple's able to sell their products at incrementally higher prices. But if Apple was to just give you everything you wanted the next year, what would really be the purpose in you investing again the year after that and the year after that? So financially, it's actually important for tech companies to slowly release these upgrades. In the same manner, the Nikon Z9 is not that large of a leap forward from the Nikon Z6 or Z7 II systems. Yes, it's definitely better, undoubtedly better. 
but it's not that large of a leap forward as what we would sometimes expect as a wildlife photographer. If you're coming from a low-end camera, let's say you're, you're coming from a Canon Rebel or a Panasonic Micro Four Thirds system, yes, the Nikon Z9 will be a huge and massive leap forward in the quality of images you're able to capture. But if you're coming from another flagship camera, let's say the Panasonic S1R, the Canon R5, the Sony A1, it might not be, if any, if at all, a leap forward in the quality of the images you're able to get. There's this idea we've talked about in the past called the rate of return in a podcast with Bayou Josh, as well as a short little special that I made on it personally, in which the more money that you wind up spending, the less you wind up getting per dollar that you spend. And in the same way, as you start to get into these really expensive camera bodies, yes, they will get better and better as you spend more and more money. However, they start to get incrementally less valuable per dollar that you spend. So number three, your skill level matters more. I think a great example of this is Shaz Jung. Shaz Jung is a great National Geographic wildlife photographer who captures outstanding images of different types of wild cats, big cats, right? And he often is sponsored by Samsung in order to take wildlife photography images using a phone. Now, I wanna say this. It's very obvious to me when I look at which images are shot with his phone versus his professional wildlife gear setup. There definitely is a distinguishment there. As someone who's trained to be able to see that stuff, there's no question in my mind when I see an image that I'm like, yep, he was sponsored by Samsung to shoot that. I look in the description, sure enough, he was, versus an image in which he captured with his professional gear setup. However, those images that he captures with his phone, a lot of us might be hard pressed to be able to capture in the first place because they're so much more creative, insightful, artistic than the high majority of wildlife photographers can do with a professional setup. So a lot of people like to talk about the idea of gear being only about 10% of your quality of image at the end of the day and your skill level being about 90% of it. I'd actually slightly disagree with that. I think I fall a little bit more into like a 75-25 category. I think that gear is actually more important than sometimes we want to give it credit for. I think that about 25% of my quality of images has been improved by simply my gear. And even in some of the students that I've worked with, I've seen huge and massive leaps forward for them when they're able to invest into a slightly better gear set. However, I do agree that 75% of that quality of image at the end of the day relies on your own skill, your own knowledge, your own ability to be able to capture the subject that you're looking after. And if that isn't there, it makes no sense to spend money on that 25%. Also, to bring this to light, think about how much money you spend on those two categories. So if we compare those numbers side by side, you have 25% as being your gear quality of image, and you have 75% as being reliant upon your skill level, we spend typically 100% of our financial investment into that 25% quality of image at the end of the day, where typically as wildlife photographers, we spend $0 or 0% on that 75% quality of image at the end of the day. How weird is that? How ironic and kind of backwards is that? If we're not willing to spend money on improving our skill level, why are we so willing to spend money, thousands of dollars, on upgrading just a little bit better of a camera gear system? Now, number four, why? Why is it that you want the Nikon Z9? So for those of you who are looking to kind of go full time or make money off of wildlife photography, I always think of it in this way. Financial investments should yield results. Is this current investment going to get me the amount of money that I put back into it? Now, bets are, if you are just starting out doing wildlife photography or just wanting to get into it and you haven't made money yet, this Nikon Z9 will take you years to make your money back and the financial investment will not be worth it. And which by that time that you make your money back on it, there's gonna be something so much better. Is it really worth it to drop $5,500 on a new camera when you at your skill level and your kind of area in your career could probably spend that same amount of money on the lens and the camera body and a whole complete wildlife ghillie suit setup or something to be able to get images according to the skill level you're at and learn how to financially grow your income with those tools. I think unless you're at a place where you're really good and you're already building a lot of financial income as a wildlife photographer, this financial investment would not yield the result you'd be hoping for. Secondly, if you're not doing it to become full-time or to make money off it, are you doing it simply because you love to take photos and you want to take better photos? And if so, will this Nikon Z9 make you that much happier? Will it really increase the quality of your life and the quality of your happiness that much more? I always think of it this way. Often I go out to local ponds and I see people with huge $10,000 ballistic lenses mounted on tripods shooting straight down into the water. 
I can tell you right now that that image taken with that amazing lens and camera body that is most likely attached to it will not look that different from a Panasonic Micro Four Thirds camera that's shooting straight down into the water with the 100 to 400 millimeter, therefore 200 to 800 millimeter full frame equivalent type of lens attached to it. I can tell you those images will not look that much different aesthetically because neither image really puts in the effort, has the skill level behind the shot to be able to look really that great. You're going to be able to see the bird well or see the subject well. It's going to look nice and pretty if you're just wanting to look at the subject. But if that's where your source of happiness comes from, then spend money accordingly. If you're really wanting to take it out and test it and use it in those very low light pre-sunrise or post-sunset scenarios and you need these great focal lengths or these awesome you know, frame per second shots and burst modes, then sure, invest into it if it's going to be worth that financial amount of investment for you. And if it's really going to enhance your quality of life that much more, and if you have the money for it. So none of these things are to say that you can't invest more money into your camera just simply for the sense of making you happier, but just think about it. Does it really enhance your happiness that much more? $5,500 worth more? In conclusion, if you're looking to invest a heavy amount of money into a new camera system to get 5% better of images, then go for it. I fully support the idea of you purchasing the Nikon Z9. However, if you're looking to have a good time on a limited budget or become a professional, but you aren't making that much money yet, don't do it. If you want to take a deeper dive into wildlife photography, conversations, and debates like this, check out this video in the end screen here. And if you want to take a wildlife photography class mentorship with me in which you can learn and improve your skill in wildlife photography, make sure to check it out in the description below.